All right, how's everybody doing? Great or just well? I mean, is this, they told me this was kind of a stoic group, very, no, it's not? Okay. So I start with a joke anyway, but something you can understand. I, I'm not worried about this at all. I know the secret to making sure that a space brief, a space speech goes well. Do you know how you make sure? You plan it. You ask for it. You know, I, I do hesitate to tell satellite jokes because they always go over people's head. You guys are going to have to work with me a little bit here. I'll just keep going, eat up all the time. Thank you. I love polite applause. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thanks to the chamber for inviting me to speak with you all today. The people in this room represent some of the most critical partnerships as we continue to normalize operations in the newest military force to secure our nation's interests in, from, and to space. Now, from my vantage point, it's been interesting to see the evolution of the Global Aerospace Summit over the last two decades, particularly as the space domain has taken on greater and greater significance over the years. I think there can be no question that our industry partners have driven a substantial part of this change. This is what I believe is the beginning of a true golden era for commercial space. And that has significant implications for us all going forward, a point I'll touch on in a few more minutes. My goal today is to focus on what I see in the space domain, both today and looking forward, and then discuss some of the expectations and terms of reference that the Space Force has created to help our industry partners address the augmentation and integration of commercial space capabilities. My hope is that this will bring some clarity to the industry and so that they can globally support and augment the inherently governmental and military activities that we project from the space domain. Now first, as you may have heard, the Secretary of the Air Force has been talking about optimizing the department for the reestablishment of gr great power competition. The Space Force has been committed to this effort as well in the almost four years since we were established. Under Secretary Kendall's leadership and with strong partners in the Air Force and other services, we've done a lot in a very short time. But we know it's not enough if we're going to outpace our competitors. Today's space domain is far different from the one I learned to fly satellites in. It has become considerably more dynamic and dangerous security environment around the world. For one thing, there are many, many more satellites up there. The domain is now congested and more contested than at any point in our history. This historic growth of activity in the space domain was the genesis for the Space Force, a military service specifically focused on addressing the challenges and opportunities in the space domain. We were created for this new space era, an era increasingly driven by great power competition. We even have some real-world examples of this competition playing out today. As the conflict in Ukraine has shown us, space is critical to modern warfare. It has played a vital role in communications, precision navigation and timing, missile warning, command and control, and ISR. And commercial augmentation has proven its value during this conflict. It's unclassified. It has promoted shareability. It has enabled us to supplement the classified data provided. Commercial augmentation enables more distributed mission assets for our allies and partners. And those commercial capabilities will only become more important going forward, particularly as we look to the greater resilience inherent in proliferated hybrid constellations. Along the same lines, we need to look at our, all of our vulnerabilities in all three of the space segments, on-orbit systems, communications and data links, and the ground stations themselves. We cannot afford any of these segments to be an exploitable vulnerability to our space missions. There simply can't be a single point of failure in that chain. But protecting hardware and infrastructure is not enough. We need to collectively maximize our efficiency and effectiveness given the requirements of space domain in the midst of this great power competition. So we also need to reimagine our training and tactics to include how we coordinate, communicate, and cooperate to ensure we are maximizing our effectiveness against a thinking, determined, and very capable adversary. And one way we are addressing future challenges is by exploring ways to better integrate commercial space. Commercial capabilities, services, and activities are expanding rapidly. 
The competition we are seeing today in com commercial space is driving innovation from drawing board to orbit like never before. And the Space Force wants to harness these efforts to achieve an enduring advantage through commercial augmentation during times of competition, crisis, and conflict. We know our commercial partners are a big reason that we can outcompete our adversaries. In particular, we want to take full advantage of the capacity, the on-orbit rapid tech refresh rates, and innovation offered by commercial space sector, all to enhance what we provide to the combatant commanders. With this in mind and many other factors, our Space Warfighting Analysis Center will conduct detailed, data-driven mission analysis to assess the architectures that are optimized for a given mission while remaining cost-informed. As the cost of launches continues to go down, the bar for innovation gets even lower. Small satellite manufacturing is becoming more automated, more like assembly lines, thereby again lowering the th commercial threshold for entry into the market, allowing for greater proliferation, promoting faster technology refresh rates, and all improvements that we need to meet the current and future challenges in the space domain. One way we are enhancing our relationships with commercial partners is through a soon-to-be-released commercial space strategy. This new strategy will provide a unifying guidance to the force to achieve competitive advantage through commercial augmentation, again, during times of crisis, conflict, and even competition. It will allow us to take full advantage of speed and innovation capabilities offered by the commercial space sector to create strategic advantage. Our goal is to accelerate our advantage through commercial space to support joint operations, and I'm hopeful it will be approved and published in the weeks to come. But before you execute the strategy, it's important that we're all having the same fundamental conversation. We have to define our terms. And so preceding this, this uh, space, commercial space strategy, we're working to define a terms of reference, to standardize the discussions that we have with industry, and quite frankly, even the American people. For example, we define augmentation as the use of commercial space goods, services, and activities to increase both capacity and resilience. Similarly, we define what we mean by commercial activity. What is a critical function? What are the inherently governmental functions? What tasks can be executed in whole or part by a private sector entity? Let me give you some specific examples of commercial augmentation and integration across what we're coming to recognize as the five broad categories of data, services, hardware, software, and networks. For data, we have Space Systems Command Pilot for surveillance, reconnaissance, and tracking, or like the military likes to do, SRT, provided by commercial vendors in support of U.S. Africa Command. The goal of this pilot is to demonstrate a commercial capability to provide timely operational planning products, in this case to U.S. AFRICOM. The SRT cell will provide tools, expertise, and direct access to the commercial marketplace for finished imagery products in support of unmet Joint Force operational requirements. For the services, 16 companies were awarded a not-to-exceed IDIQ contract in July for proliferated low-Earth orbit satellite-based services. The contracts were awarded by the U.S. Defense Information Systems Agency through the Commercial Satellite uh, commercial Satellite Communications Office. This is a central marketplace for SATCOM services operated by Space Systems Command. This is a good example of how to build a market of winners that can continue to compete based on a, the capability, capacity, and refresh rate that only the commercial sector can provide. For hardware, the Space Development Agency is in the middle of the issuance of a firm fixed price other transaction authority. This is what it sounds like when a history major is teaching acquisition. Firm fixed price, other transact OTA, that's right, thank you. Prototype agreement with a total potential value of around $200 million for the establishment of the Tranche 1 demonstration and experimentation system. The vendor will provide 12 satellites and supporting capabilities to augment, augment SDA's Tranche 1 uh, space data transport layer with demonstration and experimentation of tactical satellite communication and integrated broadcast services uh, from low Earth orbit. For software, a technology consulting firm was recently awarded a prime contract to provide software development service, 
supporting our defense cyber operations for Space Systems Command. These were the Manicor and Kraken product lines. The vendor will, part, uh, will partner with our DCO, Defensive Cyber Ops for Space, to develop new features and update the existing product line. Currently, Space Delta-6 provides continuous space access and availability through the satellite control network, along with organizing and operating the defensive cyber operations capabilities. Finally, for our networks. Earlier this year, Space Systems Command selected an industry partner to provide systems engineering and logistics support to the satellite control network. Under this contract, the vendor will reinforce the satellite control network's mission to provide high, reliable telemetry, tracking, command communication, and control for more than 170 DOD, NRO, civil, and allied satellites. And it will integrate new systems and services into our battle management C3 sustainment programs. But the value of the partnerships in space ex extends beyond just the United States and our commercial partners. No one nation or organization can ensure the security and accessibility of space. Success in the space domain is the ultimate team sport. And we know our international partnerships are critical to ensuring that success. There is no question the viability of our efforts in space also rests on our ability to build a coalition and strengthen a rules-based international order in space. So as we continue to prepare for great power competition, we still, must have, we still have much to do to normalize space operations, tactics, techniques, procedures, standards, just as we have in the other domains. Certainly, the situation in Ukraine has demonstrated the critical importance of timely coordination with allies, in fact, with alliances that share these common sets of standards. Success in the space domain requires comprehensive and actionable space domain awareness. We must understand what's happening in space to ensure safe operations, while simultaneously monitoring for behaviors that are irresponsible and even hostile. Because it's global, space domain awareness must be a collective effort. A shared understanding of the domain enables the coalition to have actionable, cooperative decision-making. It helps promote responsible behaviors and enables appropriate responses that avoid unnecessary escalation when confronted with malign, irresponsible, or even dangerous actions. And you'll notice I said coalition. I firmly believe that we must normalize how we collectively operate in this domain. That means building a coalition space domain awareness framework. We need to continue the shared strength of interoperability we see in other domains. We need sensors distributed globally. We need our allies and industry partners collecting, securing, and sharing data with each other. Going forward, all space users will be in the combat zone during a conflict. You cannot separate civilian and military assets in this domain. So we, are, we all share the risk if a war comes to space. There are always, I'm sorry, there are ways to mitigate this risk. As we've learned before, mutual understanding, interoperable equipment, common communications, and network infrastructure, these are the building blocks of successful multinational operations. If we ignore these lessons in space, space assets could, space assets could be disconnected from the greater effort and operational effectiveness will result. To implement these lessons in space, we must collectively build tactics, techniques, and procedures. We need to train like we fight, train like the, we're, we plan to operate together, just like we do in every other domain. The bottom line is that cooperation is absolutely essential. Successfully achieving a safe, stable, secure, and sustainable space domain will rest on our ability to collectively work together and normalize space operations in the same vein as our agreements in the air, land, and sea domains. To not do so will invite crippling attacks on space infrastructure, infrastructure that has come to underpin almost all of our terrestrial force designs. So in closing, I'd like to reemphasize, the conflict in Ukraine has made it clear, access to the use of space is fundamental to modern war. It is also clear that technology is a force enabler that must be supported by integrated training and coalition operations. Historically, space has been an area of unilateral action. This must change. We need to work together as responsible actors to protect and defend against activities that undermine the safety and security of space. 
We need to improve cooperation, coordination, and opportunities for interoperability. We need to collectively sustain freedom of action in space, optimize resources, enhance mission assurance and resilience, and ultimately deter conflict. We also need to increase our collaboration with the commercial space industry to enable new capabilities that support integrated deterrence, integration that includes data sharing, interoperability between our allies and industry partners. This process has begun. We're already collaborating better than ever with more to come. The golden age of commercial space is well underway, and with your help, I'm confident it can be successful for all of us. So as we say in the Space Force, thank you and Semper Supra. Thank you.